Hello there everybody, I'm Daryl Griffiths, welcome to my latest video of film review, I hope you've all been very well. Today I'll be reviewing the much anticipated adaptation of the international bestseller The Girl on the Train. It was originally written by Paula Hawkins and is brought to the screen by Tate Taylor who provided us with the help which was a wholesome, wonderfully performed, if slightly disney take on 1960s Mississippi and the race tensions during the civil rights movement. The Girl on the Train, if you've seen the trailers and obviously not read the book it has promised much intrigue and much mystique and the plot line has been very much kept predominantly under wraps uh, but it essentially revolves around three women Hayley Bennett's Megan uh, Rebecca Ferguson's Anna who of course stole the show in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation and there is Emily Blunt's Rachel who is the narrator of the piece. Her daily commute is tedious we can all appreciate that in our daily lives day in day out working between home and our work lives uh, we sometimes pierce into the distance through the windows and hope for something a little bit more wonderful or excitable in our lives and we sort of paint these pictures and trying to tap into the minds of other people and the lives that they live and we sort of paint this perfect picture sometimes and of course with the film it is accentuated for dramatic effect Emily Blunt's Rachel is still suffering from a fractured relationship with Justin Theroux's character who I'm a big fan of if you've not seen HBO's The Leftovers I thoroughly recommend it it's terrific viewing and she he has of course moved on and is with Rebecca Ferguson's Anna and Hayley Bennett's Megan is the babysitter uh, for the couple uh, but Blunt Rachel sees something that of course prompts her into swift action of course I'm going to reveal it uh, if you've not seen many clips or anything but it really does spearhead the narrative and the gears that it goes through and the revelations that occur the girl on the train as a film I think I mean personally I haven't read the book I think the first third the way it's been spliced and jumping from time frame to time frame and character to character it does feel like it stifles the suspense a little bit and the direction of Taylor I think it's a little it's more workman like I mean there's some great visual flourishes and uh, the Hitchcockian sort of voyeurism that it tries to go for and um, but with films like this when it sort of has a bit of sleaze and a bit of grim grisly detailing to it and sometimes you have to sort of embrace the ludicrous accesses of that I think Taylor's a little bit reluctant in the beginning and there's not enough visual flourishes sometimes to keep you engaged um, and it's a little bit dull and plodding in nature but the, the other two thirds of it are fantastic, are really engrossing and the way it works through the gears. Sometimes it's a little bit too telegraphed uh, considering where it goes into its resolution but I think it is really effective. I just think sometimes with Taylor's direction because it's so sometimes a bit too static and it really I mean there's some so many close-ups of Blunt who is fantastic which I'll obviously uh, delve into in a moment but I just think he relies too much on something that's a bit too samey and similar and like with films like this like I mean the obvious comparison would be David Fincher's Gone Girl but maybe because of the mystery and the intrigue that this film possesses or at least tries to plump into its narrative I think there's comparisons to be made with Zodiac and Denis Villeneuve's uh, Prisoners. Films like that, that for all their desaturated visual palettes, you can still be sort of inventive and distinctive with its visuals and trying to engage an audience instead of just relying on all the terrific character work. Um, but I think that's the only real issue I've had in terms of what Taylor brings to the table. I think the way the film progresses is fantastic. Again, the character work, Blunt, is outstanding as Rachel. She captures the nuances of Rachel so well. Uh, of course, with the alcoholic issues that she has and the motivations that ha she has and how reliable she is as a narrator, as a character. And as I say she's really tortured but there's still a degree of empathy that you get with her and I think that's just purely down to Blunt's stellar work here she's fantastic not that I had much doubt uh, considering what we saw in the trailers Hayley Bennett and Rebecca Ferguson 
they bring much vulnerability and naive sort of naivety to their characters which plays into the hands of course of how the film unravels later on and i think they are great as well um initially i was quite worried of where the male characters were going uh, justin theroux and luke evans here and they're a bit one-dimensional in the beginning but as characters especially in the latter stages of the film they really become embroiled in a very high stakes and multi-layered narrative and that their work is very effective here as well and um, but i think as a whole the girl on the train is clearly trying to aspire to be the next gone girl and it for me it's nowhere near that level i mean gone girl for me is a stellar piece of work from david fincher and i think uh, clearly it's trying to be that next film of that sort of tone and it doesn't reach those heights for me mainly because of a very flawed first third and trying to find its rhythm narratively and especially visually as well um because at times it feels a bit too made for tv a little and considering the uh stars on show here and the director himself considering the help as well it does get a little bit um uh, confined into that made for tv mold and it really shouldn't be but the girl on the train provides solid thrills very pulpy and provocative uh, in its narrative the revelations for the most part have a real punch albeit sometimes it's a bit too telegraphed and maybe it shouldn't be so reliant on giving everything away and dropping little red herrings along the, the narrative trail uh, for the audience. But The Girl on the Train is a solid, often engrossing picture. It doesn't reach the heights of what it's trying to aspire to be. But as film adaptations go, it is very solid. It's competently directed and is more or less elevated by its stellar character work. And that is a wrap on our review of The Girl on the Train. Next week, I will be off to London Film Festival. I am so excited. It's going to be my first time. Uh, I'll be providing uh, video reviews of a few of the films I'll be seeing. Uh, it's Only the End of the World for Xavier by Xavier Dolan. That is the key one I'll be doing. There'll be re written reviews, give me words out, eh? uh, of the films that I uh, catch at LFF on Front Row Reviews. Uh, be sure to check out the site and, of course, like the Facebook page and go on their Twitter page as well. That would be much appreciated. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel below. Again, much appreciated and I really do appreciate that people are still checking these out. I'm trying to be a bit more consistent. Time-wise, I'm very consumed and bogged down by work currently, but I am really trying to pull these through and I hope that you like them, essentially. Um, but that is a wrap. I have been Daryl Griffiths. Uh, the next video will certainly be within the timeline of LFF next week. I cannot wait to share my thoughts with the film with you guys about the films that I'll be seeing. Uh, but take care for now, and I will speak to you soon, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this review. See you later.